Mr. Belichick and Brady, Mr. War Room, Mr. Boston Globe, Mr. Former WEEI, Mr. Most Knowledgeable Person mm. About the Patriots Dynasty. That great I intro. Know. Um, oh, they don't man. take missing the playoffs too kindly around those parts, do they? No. Or is it seeing Tom Brady flourish in Tampa? Does that have them pissed off to the tune of uh, putting in work and spending a lot of money on the first unofficial day of free agency? So technically, the league year begins on Wednesday in the NFL. Today, this new thing, the first day that people can kind of come to terms, they, they, they came to terms with the fact that, look, People are tampering, so let's let's have a legal tampering period, which is something of an oxymoron, but okay. Um, and so, uh, the Patriots already hell they may have signed somebody else in the last minute. The way they the way they going at it, Devon Gacho, real smart, real slick signing, defensive tackle, nose tackle type from Miami, Janu Smith, tight end. From Tennessee, who you just get the feeling they gave him fifty million dollars, by the way, over four years. You just get the feeling that there's more for him to do than what he got a chance to do in Tennessee. No disrespect to that's right, Ryan Tannehill and Arthur Smith and Mike Vrabel, but real talented player. And then just in the last five minutes or so, Matthew Judon, pass rusher from Baltimore. Bro, I'm old enough to remember when the Patriots didn't do free agency. Yeah, now they splurging that, that money burning a hole in their pocket. What what decreased salary cap? I mean, my goodness. What's up with your squad, bro? Well, Mike, I, I think you named two of the uh, two of the three elements. Uh, number one, missing the playoffs for the first time since 2008. And and really the first time with Tom Brady, Tom Brady missed the playoffs. Last time he missed it was 2002. So that year they missed it in 08. Tom Brady was out for the year. So it's been a long time. Double digit season since they missed the playoffs. They finished seven and nine last year. That's a factor. Tom Brady going to Tampa Bay and balling out, throwing his 40 touchdown passes and living his best life in Tampa, throwing the Lombardi trophy off the boat, boat to boat, having a great time. That was a factor. But Mike, I'm gonna tell you another factor. Uh, this probably was passed down to you and you will pass it down to your three children because you guys are a smart household, the Smith household. I know that for a fact. And this is the importance of having good credit. I had that retroactive, retroactive <laughs> feed. I put good credit last week. We never got to it. But the Patriots were in the top five with having some resources, even though the salary cap went down to $162 million. So $162 million for the Patriots, they're still in pretty good shape, had well over $50 million, $60 million to spend. You contrast that with the New Orleans Saints, who we'll talk uh, about at some point today. They were over one, $100 million. That's hard to believe. They're $100 million over the cap. So the pay, you put all those factors in there. The Patriots were well positioned. They have ignored the tight end position for two years in New England. They have not thrown to the tight end. They act like it's not a real position in the NFL. And they get pick up John o. Smith, which is a great signing because Hunter Henry is going to set the market. They don't set the market. Good signing for them. 26 year old tight end who's got room to grow, as you pointed out. Their defense last year, Mike, the numbers look okay. But offensive coordinators can tell you we didn't have to plan for anybody in their front seven. Nobody in their front seven scared us. Nobody. We can run on them. We can throw on them. We can do what we need to do. Uh, the New England Patriots don't scare us. And they just uh, picked up two guys who will dramatically improve their front seven. So let's get ready. The AFC East is about to be the best division in football because Miami's not done. You know that. Uh, the Bills are very good. One game away from going to the Super Bowl. And the Patriots, you can never ignore the Patriots, we'll especially see. when they're spending. And we'll, and we'll see about fun. the Jets. We'll see what the Jets do. Maybe the Jets uh, have an eventful offseason. Whether or not it translates to the regular season, we'll see. But the Jets got a lot of cap space. They got a new direction. They got, of course, a lot of draft picks starting at second overall. Your man, Zach Wilson, might be in the AFC East yes. before it's all said and done. No, this is fun. This is fun right now. This is... Because, I mean, the pay, first of all, Matthew Judon, let's, let's talk about the one that literally just happened. This news just broke. Earlier, we saw that they were making a strong push for Matthew Judon. Now it's official, four years, $56 million, $32 million guaranteed. Let's just nerd out on this right now. I mean, $50 million to the tight end, John o. Smith, uh, two-year deal. I, again, I love the Gotcho signing. I mean, those guys are rare, guys that you could plug in the middle 
of, of a 3-4 front. We are, obviously, the Patriots have a malleable defensive front, but nonetheless, a perfect scheme fit. And I mentioned scheme fit going back to Judon because you and I both know, and they did it with, ah, and this one did not work out well. This, uh, this is a free agent example. Who was the guy that they signed from Baltimore that was actually a Dallas Thomas? Plus? A Dallas Thomas. A Dallas Thomas. There you go. Baltimore, I think, has the best front office in pro football. They do it better than anybody. I agree. Their MO is agree. to uh, draft guys. It's, it's very, it's very Pittsburgh like, uh, but better, in my opinion. Draft guys, develop them, let them go, get the compensatory picks. Now, I believe they franchised Judon last year, didn't franchise Or, or pay The point him. being is that a both. Or, or pay those or, guys. Or pay them as a They're case special. Yeah, or pay them as a case may yeah. be. Right, but if yeah. they don't, you'll get the compensatory picks. They, they, they've mastered that compensatory pick formula. My point with Judon is a, a Ravens edge, if you're the Patriots, oh, thank you very much, we'll take that, and drop him right into your system because he's right. going to be able to flourish in this system. And don't forget, as you know, Michael, the people like Dante Hightower, for example, who opted out last year, who presumably will be coming back uh, to that defense. Pat Chung is another one that comes to mind. So... The Patriots went from, and I said this going into last year, I thought Cam Newton was the most compelling figure in the NFL going into last season. Just because you take a former MVP and drop him into the Patriots. Obviously, the season did not play out that way. He got COVID. He struggled. Their offense struggled. 79, we know how it ended. But now, and this is what I'm about to say is kind of why bad teams usually uh <laughs> Splurge right. on I was the first say, day of free agency yeah, because it ain't about winning the don't do this. But when the Patriots, yeah, but when the Patriots do it, you're like, oh, wait a second, <laughs> this is this is different. This is different. Like, wait a second, because they, they right. know what they're doing. Like other teams that spend money don't know what they're doing. The Patriots spend money, know what they're doing. So I get the hypocrisy. But typically, bad teams go all in on free agency. But in this instance, a couple of things jump out. One, the Patriots are trying to be back in a big way and quickly. And when you look at the moves they've already done, what they still may do, not to mention we'll see who they get in the middle of the draft, which is higher than they're used to picking. 15 is, is high for them. We'll see what they do with the draft and who they acquire in the draft. They really have a chance. And I, and I did say this last offseason, that the dynasty wasn't dead. It was just interrupted. I'm not saying they go and win another several Super Bowls, but I do have a feeling that they'll be back and contending very quickly. Um, the other thing, and again, money's money, and it spends everywhere. But tell me what yes. you think about this, bro. I, I thought that there was a chance that the Patriots brand, the Patriot way, might have taken something of a hit. It's never been a destination for free agents. But it's always been somewhere where if somebody was ring chasing or want to get a ring or want to be a part of, right. you know, that, that dynasty, that excellence, they may go jump on for a year, mostly at the end. Again, every now and then they've gotten somebody either on the come up in free agency that people didn't know that they were going to be good and they became good in that system or an Adelius Thomas type. Every now and then they would spend some money in free agency, some serious money, but rarely. They were mostly a draft and develop type place. I say all that to say, Michael. I thought that last year with Brady gone and him having fun and Gronk having fun and enjoying life outside right. of New England and the Patriots struggling in the meantime, I thought that maybe it was going to be a lot harder for them to attract free agents, marquee free agents at that. But so far, that has not been the case. Again, money is money and the contract yeah. they, they had to spend and I don't know how much they had to overspend, but John O. Smith, Devon Gacho, and uh, and Matthew Judon taking their money says that Belichick's name st still rings bells. Yeah, you know what, Mike? I think you're right in, in a sense that it did take a hit. I thought, I thought the the Patriot brand took a hit, but not when it when it came to free agents. I thought the hit was Tom Brady being there for forever, uh, and, and then leaving and saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, I, this is the Patriot way." This is how I was raised, but I can do something completely different and be successful. Watch. And not only did he do it, when he went to Tampa, all of a sudden, Rob Gronkowski, who tearfully re uh, retired, retired, said his body was broken down, he wasn't having fun anymore. Now Rob Gronkowski wants back in. 
And the Patriots own his rights, and they can play hardball with them, or they can trade them. Except back to that good credit again. If they had played hardball with them, and he said, "Okay, forget it. Don't trade me. I'm still coming back." He would have thrown up their. Uh, he would have blown up their salary structure. If he had just come back and just sat there, <laughs> uh, so they had to trade him. And so both of them were very pointed in talking about how this was a different operation than New England. They kept like they bring it up. They voluntarily yeah. tell you how it was different. And so, yeah, that was it was almost like a finger in the eye uh, to the way the Patriots did business. Yo, man. But you you said it right. Let me inter, let me interject. Let me interject go ahead. real quick. Yo, they going they, crazy. Somebody, besides somebody else. I, I mean, I was joking when I was like, they got it. I mean, they I mean besides somebody else? <laughs> former Eagle, former Eagles defensive back Jalen Mills, four years, twenty four million, nine million guaranteed. Ro Drew Rosenhaus tells Adam Schefter. So hold on. Bro, they 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 they, <laughs> it's like they spending hey, money man. like Richard Pryor and Brewster's millions, dog. <laughs> they are spending. <laughs> they try, I mean, they're trying to get an inheritance or but something. That's like point. they are out just spending money. But that's the point. Wow, that's the point. It's money because it's not like let's let's be honest here. It's it's not like uh, Brady ever had it like that where he was in New England and he's bringing big time wide receiver tight end running back talent to him saying hey take a little less I'll take care of you now they never did it like that for Brady Brady did it himself but they never really brought in somebody free agent wise because Tom Brady was there and that and that person was willing to take less not big name guys like they traded for Randy Moss they traded for Wes Welker but those guys weren't just coming in and they got and they got they got, they got, they got a discount Wes Welker wasn't the Wes Welker we came to know. Right. Randy Moss was on a discount. Fourth round pick. He, people thought he was done with the Raiders. Uh, there's a little bit of a trend here, it, uh, you know, with the with the four of Drew the Rosenhaus? Patriots. Is it Drew Rosenhaus? <laughs> Is that who our said, common I've denominator? Known Coach Bill Belichick, who says I've known Coach Bill Belichick for 30 years, and that experience was beneficial to getting these deals done. Because also throw in the fact that they got Trent Brown back, uh, right tackle. Who the Raiders gave a, a boatload of money. They got him back in a trade. Meanwhile, shipping Marcus Cannon uh, to the Texans. Was, um, let me just point out for them, for them, Trent Brown was a left tackle when they when they won the Super Bowl against the Rams. Yeah, he was their yeah, left tackle. That's right. That's right. And so that's right. You know that 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 move might cause like a domino effect uh, along the offensive line. Look, you know this, Mike. Uh, you know from covering this team in their Super Bowl years. You saw them at their height. I mean, you were covering them when they were winning 21 games in a row and doing all sorts of, you know, historic things. But when they lose, like they're, when people call them arrogant, I'm going to say guilty as charged. They are. They are arrogant. They're, they're, they are an arrogant organization. Not stubborn, but they are arrogant. They expect, it's almost like you bring home a 93% a to the Patriots and, and Bill Belichick is like, mm, I've seen better. Kill Bill, shout out. You know, I've seen better. Big deal. Seen better. Right? So yeah. they they used to have uh you know uh my man uh used to play for uh, used to play for the uh Falcons, tight end. Algie Algie Crumpler. So Algie Crumpler, Crumpler, yeah. He was there for only a couple of years with the Patriots, and he he said he was amazed oh, one day that. he was in the he was in the cafeteria. So it was a year. It was like they lost to the Jets in the playoffs. So they, they were 14 and 2. They lost to the Jets uh, divisional playoff game. That was the uh, Bart Scott. Can't wait. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. to all the non believers. <laughs> um, right. But that year, Algie Crumpler is sitting in the cafeteria and he hears this remarkable conversation. Now, he's never been to the, he's never won a Super Bowl. He's just happy to be going to the playoffs. Here's this remarkable conversation between Jonathan Kraft, son of the team owner, Robert, and a couple other players about how they should have six Super Bowl wins. He's like, what? Hmm. Now, at that point, <laughs> right. they had three. So at that the point, they had three. There. Yeah. <laughs> He's right. like, you got yeah. three. You, you mean to tell me, like, you yeah. think you should have more than three? Really? You think yeah. you should have six? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know. When we lost in 06 to the Colts and they won, we would have beat the Bears when there, you know. Then we lost to the Giants the next year, you know. And, uh, uh, Eli was in the grass, they didn't call it. He's like, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> what is this? Yeah. This is how they roll. I think this is a response 
This is a, this is a response to seven and nine. They just or don't was roll this like the plan that. all along, though. Or or, or let me let me, so. let me challenge you on that. Let me challenge. Okay. Well, let me challenge you on that. I'm a challenge. Right. I'm gonna challenge you on that by using your own material against you. Uh, uh, just again <laughs> for devil's advocate. After they won Super Bowl 36. After they won Super Bowl 36. The first one. Yep. How many? What, what was the question? I believe that you asked Bill Belichick. Like, how many players? How many championship yes. players are on this roster? And what did he say? I said, "How many players away?" I said, "How many players away are you from being a championship team?" And he said, 20. <laughs> it's still, right. He said, 20. Right. So I said, "Who says that after winning a Super Bowl?" So they won a Super Bowl, but he knew they weren't good. He knew yeah. they weren't as good as. Super Bowl champion would suggest. I again seven and nine. Look, if they'd have, if they'd have managed to do better last year, you know, maybe they wouldn't feel the need. Maybe there wouldn't be a sense of urgency. What I'm challenging is this, and Belichick even alluded to it last year, and we thought it was sounding like excuse making. But wasn't last year always supposed to be a gap year anyway, so to speak, when it came to uh, the cash that they were spending, not just the cap, which is how they ended up with this cap. Uh, space is cap surplus that they have right now. I guess what I'm saying is as much as it may seem to be it's a sexy storyline. I started I started the conversation that way or they saw Brady get yeah. his so now they motivated to go spend money, you know, or they went seven and nine and they didn't make the playoffs. So now they got now they're desperate to get back to the playoffs. I, they always take a long view no matter the, the success in the short term or and this is rare though. I mean, it never failed in the last 20 years, but I just wonder if this is this is how they were going to go about this offseason, regardless of last year, knowing that they had holes to fill. And if these particular players were not available, let's say Matthew Judon had been tagged again or came to an agreement with a long term deal with the Ravens. Let's say Devon Gotcha wasn't available. Let's say the Trent Brown signing did not blow up in the Raiders face. Um, you know, John o. Smith. I mean, the Titans had to decide not to keep John o. Smith and for that matter, Chris Davis, the wide receiver who they took fifth overall uh, a couple of years back. They had to decide we're not going to take them. I don't know. What I'm getting at is I don't know that if these particular players were not available and this is why I do believe that this spending spree is not like, say, Washington back in the day when Dan Snyder used to just throw money at anybody with a heartbeat. If yep, these particular players, if these particular fits were not available. I don't know that the Patriots go and spend this money just to spend this money. I don't know yeah, that the money is burning a hole in their right. pocket. That is that it's a vengeance right. tour spend and like, hey, yo, who all who all go be there? Like, let's do this. Everybody, if you if you're a free agent, come to death row. I don't think that's how they would be going about this. <laughs> I think it's really these particular players and these particular fits made sense and they happen to have the dollars this offseason to spend per their plan all along. It almost felt like last year they knew they weren't they were in for a, a difficult year with the opt outs and how they decided to manage the cap. I don't know that this is necessarily a response. I love to know this <laughs> this though a, a couple of years ago. This time of day you would be on the radio. Would you not at one point you you yep. you, you, you did you did midday and six. afternoon drive. Yeah, 10 to 2 Yo, as before we go. Be, before we go to break and, and wrap this segment of the conversation up, however you wish, but I, I do want to just lob this at you. Just tell me what Boston Sports Radio would be like, you know, right now. Like those phone lines would all be red right now. I know. I'm what sorry, would Boston Sports line. Radio be like right right now? What would y'all? What would the vibe be in New England? What are they, what, are they, what would they be saying to y'all right now? What the first time, long time callers <laughs> first time, hey, first got, time hey, call got, a long we, time we, listening <laughs> listen we got we got David we got David Roxbury on line one it's, David yeah, Roxbury is yeah. like okay this is what I'm talking about this is what the Patriots need to get back to last year was awful the year before even though they were 12 and 4 that was bad too 12 and 4 it was bad I'm telling you I'm telling you high expectations so look hey man I'm excited about this I'm hyped uh, you know, I was I was a Patriots fan when they had those aluminum seats at Sullivan Stadium back in the day. <laughs> hey, I'm excited about this. But one more thing. I don't know about this Cam Newton signing. Got to get a quarterback. Draft a quarterback. 
Get a wide receiver. Let's get a hey, wide receiver. Garoppolo. <laughs> is, is Garoppolo out the mix? Yeah, I think he's got the We don't know what the Niners are going to we don't know what the Niners are going to do with Jimmy Garoppolo, despite what John Lynch nah, said. Yeah. We don't know. We don't know. Nah. We don't know. Okay. Hey, hey, listen. Can I just tell you this? If, you, if, if you'd have woke up this morning, if waking up this morning, if I'd have said, hey, Mike, by the time we come on the air, John U. Smith, Matthew Judon, Jalen Mills, and Devon Gacho are going to be Patriots by the time 3 o'clock hit. I would, hey, man. I would have pitched... I would have pushed back against Matthew Judon, but before we go, before you try to take this break now, I wonder if you want to tell on yourself. Since you what mentioned sports radio, do you remember this? <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> what? What? No, the probably time, not. I probably don't remember whatever it is. But what? I bet you do. Uh, let me tell y'all. Okay, it's we're all family here. We got no family secrets. I know what you're about to say. I know what you're about. No, no, I know what you're about to do. And wait a minute. Wait a second. Like, are you about to? Is this is this a basketball? Is this bas- is, I'm gonna take this one here. Is this basketball? <laughs> oh, I forgot about that one. No. <laughs> oh, it's not. Wait. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's not that one. That was a funny one. That, that okay. was funny. That was funny. You know what I'm talking because about? Because you just a certain you found, a certain Hall of Famer better than a, another Hall of Famer. Yeah, talking, I'm talking about you that found one. yourself in a position. I backed Michael Smith. I wasn't gonna bring this up, but I'll bring it up right now, real quick. I backed Michael Smith right. not intentionally. I put him in a position where he had to argue against the merits of Bill Russell in Boston. <laughs> Wait, I never know. That's not what I was talking about. And I who never was, did who that. Was it? That never happened. What was it? That never happened. Oh, which one was it? I never it was, argued was, against Bill. Let me, let was me it Larry Bird? That's how rumors get started. Okay, it wasn't which Larry was it? Bird either. Which it one was, was it? No, the one I'm thinking about was we had a debate, and I don't remember what year it was. But I was saying that Ray Allen was better than Paul Pierce. This is before Pierce. they got together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said yeah, yeah. I had. I okay, thought yeah. Ray Allen was better than Paul Pierce before they got together. I thought that's what you were talking about. Where did you get this Bill oh, yeah. Russell stuff from? I ain't saying. No, but we had one. We had one like that. Bill Russell. We're not disparaging, but it was. No. It was kind of like. No, it's the other black guy. It wasn't me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what, hey man, what was, the, what was the I thing? You, I ain't worked with any black people on the radio there, so. Come on. What was it? What was the thing you? What were you getting at? What was it? Was it the I was getting the at first this. one. I'm sorry. I guess we got because I do remember the Ray what? Allen Paul Pierce thing. That was funny. Once again, you're doing local radio. It's the hometown guy versus the other guy. You're going to lose. You just go lose. You just go lose that argument. Um, I, thought I, I, I thought I had a pretty good argument. No, one time you called in pretending to be a uh, uh, first time long time. <laughs> Using a Boston accent that was probably like a seven out of ten. It was. It wasn't bad. You just. You know what you did? Yeah. You channeled. Mm. You channeled your father-in-law, who's got a big-time Boston accent. You channeled your father-in-law. Accent, yeah. And you just went with it. And you weren't making. You weren't making any sense. But I was just entertained. I was just entertained by the accent. Yeah. So I was on brand. I was on brand both for Boston sports fans and for me. I wasn't making any sense. You did. That's, you that's me in a nutshell. Team. I'm not here to make sense. I'm just here to entertain you as best I can. Thank you. You know. Hey, that's. I'm yeah, trying. That's if a, you take that approach, that's a good approach to life. Hey, thanks for watching, brother from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave, and be sure to watch us three to five p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.